professional course in English. Process Technology – Equipment and Systems Unit 2 – Heat Exchangers In this lecture you will learn Heat Transfer Fluid Flow Types of Heat Exchangers Heat exchanger effectiveness Heat transfer is an important function of many industrial processes. Heat exchangers are widely used to transfer heat from one process to another. Heat exchanger allows a hot fluid to transfer heat energy to a cooler fluid through conduction and convection. Heat exchanger provides heating or cooling to a process. A wide array of heat exchangers has been designed and manufactured for use in the chemical processing industry. Heat transfer The methods of heat transfer are Conduction Convection Radiant heat transfer in the petrochemical, refinery, and laboratory environments, these methods need to be understood well. A combination of conduction and convection heat transfer processes can be found in all heat exchangers. The best conditions for heat transfer are large temperature differences between the products being heated and cooled the higher the temperature difference the greater the heat transfer, high heating or coolant flow rates, and a large cross-sectional area of the exchanger. Conduction Heat energy is transferred through solid objects such as tubes, heads, baffles, plates, fins, and shell, by conduction. This process occurs when the molecules that make up the solid matrix begin to absorb heat energy from a hotter source. Since the molecules are in a fixed matrix and cannot move, they begin to vibrate and, in so doing, transfer the energy from the hot side to the cooler side. Convection Convection occurs in fluids when warmer molecules move toward cooler molecules. The movement of the molecules sets up currents in the fluid that redistribute heat energy. This process will continue until the energy is distributed equally. In a heat exchanger, this process occurs in the moving fluid media as they pass by each other in the exchanger. Baffle arrangements and flow direction will determine how this convective process will occur in the various sections of the exchanger. Radiant heat transfer The best example of radiant heat is the sun's warming of the Earth. The sun's heat is conveyed by electromagnetic waves. Radiant heat transfer is a line-of-sight process, so the position of the source and that of the receiver are important. Radiant heat transfer is not used in a heat exchanger. Fluid flow Two major classifications of fluid flow are Laminar Turbulent Laminar or streamline flow moves through a system in thin cylindrical layers of liquid flowing in parallel fashion. This type of flow will have little if any turbulence swirling or eddying in it. Laminar flow usually exists at low flow rates. As flow rates increase, the laminar flow pattern changes into a turbulent flow pattern. Turbulent flow is the random movement or mixing of fluids. Once the turbulent flow is initiated, molecular activity speeds up until the fluid is uniformly turbulent. 
Turbulent flow allows molecules of fluid to mix and absorb heat more readily than does laminar flow. Laminar flow promotes the development of static film, which acts as an insulator. Turbulent flow decreases the thickness of static film, increasing the rate of heat transfer. Heat exchanges can be connected in a variety of ways. The two most common ways of heat exchanger connection are series flow, parallel flow. In series flow, the tube side flow in a multipass heat exchanger is discharged into the tube side flow of the second exchanger. This discharge route could be switched to shell side or tube side depending on how the exchanger is in service. The guiding principle is that the flow passes through one exchanger before it goes to another. In parallel flow, the process flow goes through multiple exchanges at the same time. Types of heat exchangers Double pipe heat exchangers Hairpin heat exchangers Shell and tube heat exchangers Reboilers Plate and frame heat exchangers Air-cooled heat exchangers Spiral heat exchangers Double pipe heat exchangers The double pipe heat exchanger incorporates a tube within a tube design. The outside pipe provides the shell, and the inner pipe provides the tube. It can be found with plain or externally finned tubes. Double pipe heat exchangers are typically used in series flow operations in high pressure. The warm and cool fluids can run in the same direction, parallel flow, or in opposite directions, counterflow or countercurrent. Flow direction is usually countercurrent because it is more efficient. This efficiency comes from the turbulent against the grain stripping effect of the opposing currents. Even though the two liquid streams never come into physical contact with each other, the two heat energy streams, cold and hot, do encounter each other. Energy laced, convective currents mix within each pipe, distributing the heat. One of the system limitations of double pipe heat exchangers is the flow rate they can handle. Typically, Flow rates are very low in a double pipe heat exchanger, and low flow rates are conducive to laminar flow. Hairpin heat exchangers Hairpin exchangers use two basic modes. Double pipe design Multipipe design The exchanger takes its name from its unusual hairpin shape. The double pipe design consists of a pipe within a pipe. Fins can be added to the internal tube's external wall to increase heat transfer. The multipipe hairpin resembles a typical shell and tube heat exchanger, stretched and bent into a hairpin. Advantages of hairpin heat exchangers Excellent capacity for thermal expansion because of its U-tube type shape. Fin design, which works well with fluids that have a low heat transfer coefficient. High pressure on the tube side. It is easy to install and clean. Modular design makes it easy to add new sections. Replacement parts are inexpensive and always in supply. Disadvantages of hairpin heat exchangers 
It is not as cost effective as most shell and tube exchanges. It requires special gaskets. Shell and tube heat exchangers. A shell and tube heat exchanger has a cylindrical shell that surrounds a tube bundle. Fluid flow through the exchanger is referred to as tube side flow or shell side flow. A series of baffles support the tubes, direct fluid flow, increase velocity, decrease tube vibration, protect tubing, and create pressure drops. Fixed head shell and tube heat exchanger On a fixed head heat exchanger, tube sheets are attached to the shell. Fixed head heat exchangers are designed to handle temperature differentials up to 90 degrees Celsius. Thermal expansion prevents a fixed head heat exchanger from exceeding this differential temperature. It is best suited for condenser or heater operations. Floating head shell and tube heat exchanger Floating head heat exchangers are designed for high temperature differentials above 90 degrees Celsius. During operation, one tube sheet is fixed and the other, floats, inside the shell. The floating end is not attached to the shell and is free to expand. The shell and tube heat exchanger is the most common style found in industry. Shell and tube heat exchangers are designed to handle high flow rates in continuous operations. Shell and tube heat exchanger consists of the following parts. Head Shell Tubes Tube sheet Baffles Head The figure shows head designs Channel and removable cover Bonnet Integral cover Channel integral with tube sheet and removable cover Shell the shell is designed to operate at a specific temperature and pressure, which are clearly marked on the manufacturer's code stamp plate. Process technicians can determine the type of shell flow by the positions of the inlet and outlet ports. Crossflow Double pass shell with baffle Single pass Parallel or countercurrent Split flow Divided flow Double split flow Tubes Tubes on shell and tube heat exchangers can be plain or finned. Fins provide more surface area and allow greater heat transfer to take place. Fins can be located externally or internally. Tube materials include brass, carbon, carbon steel, copper, cupro-nickel, glass, stainless steel, specialty alloys, manel, nickel, and tantalum. Tube sheet Tube sheets are often described as fixed or floating single or double. During operation, the tubes will expand. This expansion creates a problem within a fixed head design. Engineering specifications take into account thermal tube expansion. The term fixed tube sheet applies to the way the tube sheet is located in the inlet or return head. If the tube sheet is welded or bolted to the shell, it is fixed. 
If the tube sheet is independently secured to the tube head and is allowed to move freely inside the shell, it is floating. The figure shows sheet connections. Plane Beaded or belled Welded Flared Baffles Baffles provide the framework to support and secure the tubes and prevent vibration. The baffle layout increases or decreases fluid and directs flow at specific points. Baffle arrangements Segmental baffles Horizontal baffles Impingement baffles Longitudinal baffles Reboilers Reboilers are heat exchangers that are used to add heat to a liquid that was once boiling until the liquid boils again. Types of reboilers commonly used in industry are Kettle reboilers Thermosiphon reboilers Reboilers are closely associated with the operation of a distillation column. These types of devices are classified by how they produce fluid flow. If a mechanical device, such as a pump, is used, the reboiler is referred to as a forced circulation reboiler. Circulation that does not require a pump is classified as natural circulation. Plate and frame heat exchangers Plate and frame heat exchangers are composed of thin, alternating metal plates that are designed for hot and cold service. Plate and frame heat exchangers have a cold and hot fluid inlet and outlet. Cold and hot fluid headers are formed inside the plate pack, allowing access from every other plate on the hot and cold sides. This device is best suited for viscous or corrosive fluid slurries. It provides excellent high heat transfer. Plate and frame heat exchangers are compact and easy to clean. Operating limits are 170 degrees Celsius to 260 degrees Celsius. Because of the design specification, plate and frame heat exchangers are not suited for boiling and condensing. Most industrial processes use this design in liquid-liquid service. Plate and frame heat exchangers are high heat transfer and high pressure drop devices. They consist of a series of gasketed plates, sandwiched together by two end plates and compression bolts. The channels between the plates are designed to create pressure drop and turbulent flow so high heat transfer coefficients can be achieved. Advantages of plate and frame heat exchangers They are easy to disassemble and clean and distribute heat evenly so there are no hot spots. Plates can easily be added or removed. Low fluid resistance time, low fouling, and high heat transfer coefficient. If gaskets leak, they leak to the outside and gaskets are easy to replace. The plates prevent cross-contamination of products. High turbulence and a large pressure drop are small compared with shell and tube heat exchangers. Disadvantages of plate and frame heat exchangers High pressure and high temperature limitations Gaskets are easily damaged and may not be compatible with process fluids. Air-cooled heat exchangers Air-cooled heat exchangers do not require the use of a shell in operation. 
process tubes are connected to an inlet and a return header box. The tubes can be finned or plain. A fan is used to push or pull outside air over the exposed tubes. Air-cooled heat exchangers are primarily used in condensing operations where a high level of heat transfer is required. Air-cooled heat exchangers provide a structured matrix of plain or finned tubes connected to an inlet and return header. Air is used as the outside medium to transfer heat away from the tubes. Fans are used in a variety of arrangements to apply forced convection for heat transfer coefficients. Fans can be mounted above or below the tubes in forced draft or induced draft arrangements. Tubes can be installed vertically or horizontally. Advantages of air-cooled heat exchangers Air-cooled heat exchangers have none of the problems associated with water such as fouling or corrosion. They are simple to construct and cheaper to maintain than water-cooled exchangers. They have low operating costs and superior high temperature removal, above 90 degrees Celsius. Disadvantages of air-cooled heat exchangers They are limited to liquid or condensing service and have a high outlet fluid temperature and high initial cost of equipment. They are susceptible to fire or explosion in cases of loss of containment. Spiral heat exchangers Spiral heat exchangers are characterized by a compact concentric design that generates high fluid turbulence in the process medium. As do other exchangers, the spiral heat exchanger has cold medium inlet and outlet and a hot medium inlet and outlet. Internal surface area provides the conductive transfer element. Spiral heat exchangers have two internal chambers. Spiral heat exchangers come in two basic types. Spiral flow on both sides. Spiral flow crossflow. Type 1 spiral exchangers are used in liquid-liquid, condenser, and gas cooler service. Fluid flow into the exchanger is designed for full counterflow operation. The horizontal axial installation provides excellent self-cleaning of suspended solids. Type II spiral heat exchangers are designed for use as condensers, gas coolers, heaters, and reboilers. The vertical installation makes it an excellent choice for combining high liquid velocity and low pressure drop on the vapor mixture side. Type II spirals can be used in liquid-liquid systems where high flow rates on one side are offset by low flow rates on the other. Heat exchanger effectiveness the design of an exchanger usually dictates how effectively it can transfer heat energy. Fouling is one problem that stops an exchanger's ability to transfer heat. During continual service, heat exchangers do not remain clean. Dirt, scale, and process deposits combine with heat to form restrictions inside an exchanger. These deposits on the walls of the exchanger resist the flow that tends to remove heat and stop heat conduction by insulating the inner walls. An exchanger's fouling resistance depends on the type of fluid being handled, the amount and type of suspended solids in the system, and the velocity and temperature of the fluid stream. Fouling can be reduced by increasing fluid velocity and lowering the temperature. 
Fouling is often tracked and identified using checklists that collect tube inlet and outlet pressures, and shell inlet and outlet pressures. This data can be used to calculate the pressure differential. Differential pressure is the difference between inlet and outlet pressures. Corrosion and erosion are other problems found in exchanges. Chemical products, heat, fluid flow, and time tend to wear down the inner components of an exchanger. Chemical inhibitors are added to avoid corrosion and fouling. These inhibitors are designed to minimize corrosion, and mineral deposits. To revise the learned material answer the questions. List the ways of heat transfer. Explain each of the ways of heat transfer. Describe laminar and turbulent flow. Contrast parallel and series flow through a heat exchanger. List types of heat exchangers. List the basic parts of a hairpin double pipe heat exchanger. List the basic parts of a shell and tube heat exchanger. How are reboilers related to distillation systems? Identify the basic components of an air-cooled heat exchanger. What problems decrease the heat exchanger effectiveness? How fouling influences the heat transfer efficiency. What substances cause fouling? <laughs>